What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be looking at Jared Goff's throwing mechanics. We're going to talk about how he gets his hip through first, how he keeps his front side quiet, what you guys can do to shorten up this release, and how you guys can throw a better deep ball. Okay, so let's get started. And also, quarterbacks, if you guys want to learn how to read coverages, learn how to manipulate defenses, learn offensive play concepts, check out that link in the description that says how to read defenses. We go over 100-plus breakdowns of NFL defenses, plus you get four new breakdowns every single week, and also you'd be able to submit your film to me for a personal breakdown hope to get you guys signed up soon click that link in the description let's get started so main thing we're going to talk about here is his hips and how he keeps this front shoulder and this front arm tight okay in the next clip we get to we're going to talk about why he kind of dips this ball a little bit low as you guys know but golf is a very like long lengthy guy so i think a long release in this case is a is all right i don't think it's a big problem but that's one of the flaws that i think a lot of people are going to try to say, but it's just everybody throws the ball different, right? So we're going to look at some of the key things that he does that keeps him similar with a lot of the elite quarterbacks in this league, right? So the main thing here about this throw is we're going to look at his upper half because that's all we can see is when he starts to take this ball back, I want you to see he has this backstroke first, right? He starts to rotate this front shoulder. He keeps this front shoulder quiet, as I like to say, right? He keeps this front shoulder on the target and he's taking this ball back. What a lot of young quarterbacks will do is they'll, the second they take this ball to the backstroke, they'll open up their front shoulder. Right, and that completely loses torque because they call it hip and shoulder dissociation. Right, what that is, what that essentially means is your shoulders are going back as your hips are going forward. Right, so if I can get to that position where my shoulders are back and I'm starting to drive this back hip, as you can see, he's starting to rotate through. That's how we're going to get torque on the ball. But how I lose torque is if I take this elbow and swing it through, and I swing that shoulder around. What a lot of young quarterbacks do, and maybe it's because they're not as strong. You know, maybe it's because they got some more time to develop, get a little bit stronger in terms of their core, their legs, and letting that make the throw. They take this front shoulder and swing it down and around for power. That, that's completely incorrect because here's the deal. When you swing this elbow down, it pushes your follow through up. Your body's connected on that midline. So if your shoulder swings around, your arm's going to get left out here. You're going to let your arm fly, right? And then you swing this elbow down. What do you think is going to happen with this ball? It's going to go up and you're either going to miss high or you're going to miss low because you got this real high release and you're coming down. So we want to make sure that I keep this front shoulder square and I keep this front hand tight to my face. You see this front hand somewhere in front of his face like he's eating a sandwich. That's how I want to think of it. You want to push that ball back to start rotate that shoulder. Now I'm letting my hips decide to make this throw for me. I'm keeping this hand in front of my face like I'm eating a sandwich and I'm not swinging my front shoulder around. You see when he finishes here how square he is with his shoulders, right? He finishes very square and he does not rotate and replace with this thing, right? He see he opens up a little bit, but you still see where that front hand is and you see how his shoulders are relatively square. This um, front shoulder here isn't replacing his back shoulder, right? He's not here and replacing. He's staying square and letting his hips make this throw. You see how his hip is coming through here before the ball, right? His hip, his core is coming through before the ball. They call it chasing the hip, right? You want the ball to chase the hip. That's how you keep That's how you keep the torque. And by keeping this front arm nice and tight to your face, not swinging open this front shoulder, creates that nice almost whipping effect for you to get a little bit more velocity on this throw. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And if, guys, if any of this doesn't make sense, please post in the comments any questions you guys have. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Let's watch this thing full speed. So again, shoulders rotate back as your hips are coming through. Stay square keep that front hand tight to your face okay so now we're going to talk about the same thing in the pocket we're going to talk about his base we're going to talk about his upper half and why he dips this ball a little low let's watch it full speed so he's here i want you to see how wide of a base he has this is like an out fade concept where he's throwing this whole shot before the safety comes over the top now when he's here, I want you to see this before we get to the throw. Look at his base here in this pocket, right? And I want you to look at his posture. That's the key that I think a lot of young quarterbacks don't understand is their feet are just outside of their shoulders. They're in a nice, wide, strong base. Like you, you ever skateboarded or surfboarded, your feet aren't standing close together, right? You're not like this and your feet aren't, your heels aren't close together. You want to be in a nice, strong, wide base with a slight bend to your knee because that's where your power is going to come from, a glute dominant position. You're sitting your butt down. But also think of it like this, like if you're standing and your feet are close together because a lot of people love to teach their feet being suit like feet the heels almost touching and you just pivot in your foot in the ground right that's not realistic we want to be in a wide base because that's how we're able to move and that's how we're able to make throws when we got to drift in the pocket we got to step up in the pocket your wide base is everything now there's a point where you can be too wide and you lose power right but if i'm driving off this back leg and i'm bringing my hip through on this throw while i'm staying wide while i can get that front foot down because you're going to see how fast he gets his front foot down then i'll be fine but you got 
got to drive first. You can't just step in a wide base and not and forget all about this back leg. It's what a lot of people do. I'll say wide base, and they'll lose power because they're just stepping, and they're not driving from their back half, right? So we're going to talk about that in a second. Now, is good posture, you want to think of it like you're wearing a tie in the mirror. Because when you have a good posture, when you take this ball back, you see that elbow doesn't dip on him. That elbow is actually to get up and over his rib cage. But if his posture is kind of hunched over, he's going to be here, and that elbow dip because he's going to be coming sidearm on this throw, right? That's why we want a good posture in this pocket. So now, you see how quick this front stride gets down. Watch his front stride. His front stride is just here, right in the ground, as quick as possible. He's driving off this back leg. Let's get the front foot in the ground. My hips are starting to come through as my shoulders are going back. Again, what we were just talking about, he's keeping that front shoulder closed. So you see how he holds this ball. He's in a very relaxed position, but when he pushes it back, he kind of pushes low. That's what causes a little bit of a longer release. In this next clip you're about to see, he really pushes the ball back rather than pushes it down and it makes his release a little bit quicker but again if you get this front foot in the ground fast his hips are going to be able to come through and the ball it's really not going to matter it's not going to be like a pause in the motion it's an issue when you got a hiccup in the motion where you take it back and you have this long pause almost like kind of like i don't know if you guys have seen tim tebow throw but when tebow throws he kind of had that pause back there that's when it's a problem but that's he fixed that when he widened out his base, he started focusing on driving with his hips and not just throwing this thing with his arm. And you see it his later career when he was with the Eagles. And um, I want to say that's where he finished his career. I'm not sure 100%. But you see how tight his motion got because his hips are starting to come through this throw. His front foot's starting to get down, right? So now you see his hips coming through. And what's happening here? He's got a slight bend of this front leg. That's how you keep the ground force that you produce. Your hip is coming through first, and the ball is trailing your hip. And you watch his front arm again. That front arm's not swinging down. He's staying square here. That's it's a great mechanically sound throw, stepping up in the pocket. Good job. We're not really stepping up, but resetting my feet in the pocket and driving this ball out. Keep a strong base. Let's watch it again one more time. So quick front stride. Doesn't make the long release an issue. Let's just make sure I get this ball out of my hands fast with my hip drive. So now we're going to talk about here again, right? He doesn't drop this one low because you see how he pushes this ball a little bit more back. And we're going to be talking about some deep ball mechanics or when you're just throwing with touch. So you see how he's here and he's pushing this ball back a little bit more. He's more so rotating with his upper half rather than dropping it low and coming up around it's more so like a half circle rather than almost like a three quarters of a circle so that's better right that's better this is a clip from his pro day obviously but that's what i'm talking if you got a longer release and you kind of dip this ball low don't focus on pushing it down focus on pushing it back so you could be a more rotational athlete now anytime we throw with a little touch or we're trying to get some air on this ball the two keys that i need or really the three keys I should say is that your shoulders got to be arced, your follow through has got to be up in the air like you're th shooting a free throw, and your hip and your shoulder have got to stay the same as the mechanics that we were just talking about. Okay, So you see, when Goff is throwing here, this is not as far as he can throw it, but his shoulders are arced, and it's the same kind of dissociation, right? I'm still pushing off this back leg, I'm still getting this front foot down, and my hips are still coming through on this thing, right? Now, here's the thing that a lot of quarterbacks do when they throw a touch. They think that their power is going to come from this shoulder, and their power is going to come from their head and it's because the coaches don't know how to teach this stuff that ruins it they swing their shoulder out they swing their elbow down for power and that's not going to be consistent because what happens is when you swing that elbow down and you're trying to throw with some touch you're going to release this thing way too high and then you're going to lean your head out of there when you swing your elbow and you could end up pushing this thing out towards the outside that's why a lot of people miss inside on their deep balls to the left because they swing around and then they let their arm fly to the inside and the ball just dips right so I want to make sure that I keep this arm tight you see how he's keeping that front arm tight he's staying square and look at his head here his chin stays in the exact same spot throughout the throw and that's why he has such a clean release point you see where his release point is he's not coming sidearm across his body he's not releasing this thing super high now you see when he flicks that wrist where's his wrist split going it's up in the air like he's shooting some free throws keeping a slight bend of that front leg that's very sound deep ball mechanics here by jared goff let's watch this thing one more time it's a great job here just getting those shoulders back keeping the front shoulder tight letting his hips and letting his legs make this throw all right guys i really want to thank you for watching i really appreciate it um again if you want to learn how to read coverages you want to get better at reading defense just improving your overall football iq check out that link in the description and please leave any questions you guys have in the comments i'll make sure to get back to you i'll see you guys next time